Office 365 Groups, what the Exchange Administrator needs to know. Competing successfully in today's age of business means that we need to collaborate and share ideas. A lot of ideas. But what tools should we use? We have distribution groups, Link with contact list, Yammer with groups and networks, Twitter, Instagram, Slack. The mere number of choices we have is just dizzying. Enter Office 365 Groups. Yes, I know, another choice to make. According to Microsoft, Office 365 Groups brings people and information and applications across the Office 365 platform together to help spark communication and collaboration. As an Exchange admin, you may be asking, what's the big deal about a group? Distribution groups, security groups, Eh. Well, Microsoft has introduced a new collaborative feature last year called Office 365 Groups. And I guarantee that your end users are going to love this feature. But you need to get up to speed on this feature fast before your users do. From a technical perspective, an Office 365 group is an object that's created in Azure Active Directory that can also be written back as a distribution group for all your hybrid customers using Azure AD Connect. It behaves like the distribution group that we all know and love, but it has the added bonus of maintaining historical context of collaborative team activities. And it allows a single place for all team-based collaboration to happen. You can store all your conversations, files, team calendar, and also collaborate on a shared OneNote notebook with the Groups feature. The first apps to take advantage of the Office 365 Groups service includes features such as Outlook with Exchange Online, OneDrive, OneNote, Skype for Business, Dynamic CRM, Power BI, and because of the distributed architecture, other services like Delve and Yammer are on their way. These federated workloads back the group's feature that surfaced in Outlook on the web, OA, or Outlook 2016. Yes, additional workloads will just automatically appear and be added into the group's story. That's nice, right? So this Azure AD object is backed by a shared mailbox and exchange online for the email and calendar functionality and then also a document library in SharePoint Online for the files and OneNote functionality. So for my Exchange administrators out there, these are not to be confused with public folders. Yes, I know, public folders were also designed to provide shared access to organize and collaborate. But Office 365 Groups is the future. The reality is the rise of mobile computing and social networks has profoundly changed how we work. We have so many choices of applications to choose from, but consider this. You have a new project that's due within a several months, and you need to work with members of the accounting, legal, product development, and marketing departments. Now, you can easily create a new group, which are open for anyone to join by default, invite the colleagues required to participate in this project, and then start collaborating. And the story gets better because as the project progresses and as time passes and you add new colleagues to the project, they all now have the benefit of catching up on past conversations, files and problems that's been solved and shared in the group. No need to spend a considerable amount of time bringing new members of the project up to speed. Okay, so let's take a look at what the Groups feature actually looks like. Within Outlook on the web, we can browse all the available groups that have been created within our tenant. And if we want to actually join a group, we can just select that group and select Join. And we're automatically added to that group. Now, within each group, you'll be able to quickly see who are the members of the group, who are the admins of the group? We can look at the conversation view. 
And here is where all the conversation around our projects will happen. What's interesting here is in this particular thread, each thread lists the oldest post down to the newest post. You'll also see that you can attach files very quickly within your replies. Uh, you can use the old school style of attachments or you can leverage modern attachments as well. You're able to like responses from your colleagues as well. And then if you wanna reply and participate in that thread, clicking the reply all will allow you to respond very quickly. Now within the group, you're able to store and upload files very quickly through the OneDrive for Business interface here. You're also able to take a look at the group shared calendar. One of the features that I really like about this is that it will automatically overlay the group calendar with your own personal calendar. So if there's any meetings that have been sent to the group, you can quickly view that group calendar next to yours to make sure that there isn't any conflicts. Next, we also have a shared OneNote notebook that we can use to collaborate on our projects within the group. Now, what kind of collaboration tool would groups be without a touch-friendly mobile app? The feature would certainly be limited, right? Well, have no fear. Microsoft has released the Outlook Groups mobile app for Windows Phone, iOS, and Android. The app is very easy to install from your favorite app store, and you're able to take all the group features that you know and love from Outlook on the web or from Outlook 2016 on the road with you and continue collaborating with all your colleagues. You'll notice that you'll be able to continue conversations, you'll be able to view files, You'll be able to like replies, and you'll even be able to discover other relevant groups to participate in and join. So now that we took a quick tour of what the groups feature looks like, let's examine our administration options. At Ignite this year, Microsoft finally released a set of commandlets that can be used to manage groups within your own tenant. So here's a quick primer on the available commandlets that can be used to manage group administration within your company. After connecting to Exchange Online, you can use the Help Space Unified Group commandlet to see a list of what's available. This is a great way to see quickly what's available to you within the shell to manage your own groups. You'll see a listing here of all the commandlets that are available to us. The git dash unified group commandlet is very useful because it's going to help us to bring back more information about a specific group. For instance, you may want to display a listing of all the groups within your tenant along with the alias. To do this, you would issue the following command, git dash unified group, and then format that out as a, to display name and alias. You'll also be able to use the new dash unify group commandlet. Here you can create a new group within your tenant. The add dash unify group links commandlet is another valuable management feature because this will help you to add or remove members from an existing group. You may have picked up on an earlier comment when I said that by default, any user can create a group. As an exchange administrator, the first question that I had was, how do I restrict group creation? That's an excellent question. You can restrict who can create groups through the use of a new OA mailbox policy. Now, you may have a subset of users that you've identified that should not have the ability to create Office 365 groups. You can handle this requirement by creating a new OA mailbox policy. Let's restrict the user Eric Wells from creating groups. We can do this by issuing a new mailbox policy. So let's connect to Exchange Online with Remote PowerShell. Once connected, we can issue a new dash OA mailbox policy. Let's give this mailbox policy a name of disable 
Office 365 groups. And then once that policy is created, we'll need to set the OML box policy, the one that we just created, and specify that group creation should be disabled. We do that specifically by using group creation enabled and setting that to dollar sign false. Once that's completed, we'll then need to associate this new OMLbox policy with our user, Eric Wells. We'll do a set dash cas mailbox. We'll specify Eric Wells. We'll specify the OA mailbox policy. And we'll associate Eric Wells with that new OA mailbox policy that we just created, the disable Office 365 groups. Once that's completed, be prepared to wait five or 10 minutes or so. And then the new OA mailbox policy will propagate and it'll take effect. So when Eric Wells logs back into Outlook on the web, he'll no longer have the ability to create new groups. So what are the benefits of groups? First, it's a single place to collaborate. With so many choices that are available out there, having that single place for your end users to go will help drive efficiency and productivity. Secondly, it provides a historical context of all the conversations that's happened over the lifetime of the group. That's powerful. Lastly, anyone can join. They're open by default. So simplify your collaboration process today by connecting information to people and applications that you need within the Office 365 Groups fabric. I'd love to hear any questions or comments you may have about the Office 365 Groups feature. Reach out to me via any of the contact methods below if you have comments.